an entitled traffic blocker prevents people from getting to their jobs. So my friend decides to get some revenge by purposefully blocking his house with a shipping container. And I've never seen a better form of revenge in my life. Here's what happened. So for a bit of backstory, my friend runs his own private company. He even has a few people on payroll. And during the day of the incident that I'm going to talk about, he had an important meeting with a potential customer of theirs. He and several other companies got invited to see what they could offer the client. And that day, one of them would be picked for the job at hand and thus gain a very lucrative contract. Unfortunately, my friend got stuck in traffic due to a group of climate activists and thus missed his meeting and his only chance on securing this contract worth hundreds of thousands of pounds. Needless to say, my friend was incredibly angry. Even though things were going pretty well for his company, there's still this issue of a recession going on. So yeah, within context, this is still a major setback for them. He tried to contact the police to see if he could somehow file a report or protest against these actions, but that turned out to be completely fruitless. That evening, he decided to watch the news to learn more about these idiots while having one too many beers. And that's when it happened. He recognized one of the roadblockers, a guy who lived in the same neighborhood two streets over. Now, at first, he figured he would go pay the man a visit to discuss the errors of his ways, but that got immediately shut down by his wife. But he was still seething and scheming. The next day, he made sure to print out the pictures that he had of the guy being involved with a road blocking and went to visit the guy's neighborhood. And sure enough, they confirmed that the guy on the picture was most definitely the neighbor. While he pretty much kept to himself, he was known to be pretty insufferable at times. Especially when this guy, who we will call Mr. Entitled, was too sure about being right for his own good. But the neighbors all agreed that this blocking of traffic was beyond entitled. They should teach him a lesson that he shouldn't soon forget. And then his next door neighbor, now part of the group, suddenly said the following phrase, what if we could block him for once? And that's when it all clicked. Another neighbor soon had a brilliant idea. They absolutely could do that. But the only problem is, is that it wouldn't be free. And the next door neighbor would also be somewhat inconvenienced. But you know what? He didn't care about that at all. And thus the plan was set in motion to get revenge on this guy after he has caused so much havoc in blocking traffic. You see, this particular neighbor had a cousin working for a big construction company. So the group pulled some money together and the neighbor contacted his cousin and explained what was going on. And they hired an industrial dumpster for 48 hours. After the cousin learned about the whole story, he talked things through with his boss. And lo and behold, this company also suffered from protests. So they were quite motivated to help out. The group of neighbors wouldn't be excessively charged. Only the costs involved, minus a very small fee due to tax reasons. And free priority delivery that very same afternoon. Sure enough, a huge deep loader made its way into the street. And that's only after contacting more neighbors and nobody had any problem with moving their cars out of the way. The dumpster and the container was placed with only a meter or so to spare, precisely right in front of the neighbor's house and right in front of the front door, which only opened towards the inside. In other words, it was sort of impossible to enter and leave the house on your own if you squeeze through a bit. But that was also basically it. The sidewalk was pretty much completely blocked off. They also blocked the front view of the next door neighbor, but he obviously could care less. And then the group went across the street. They grabbed several full chairs, a table was set down, and plenty of beer and sodas were brought. The group had themselves a small party in anticipation of what would come next. Now, as expected, later that afternoon, the neighbor got home wearing a huge backpack, and he was not happy to see this container in front of his house. He was absolutely furious. When he spotted the group laughing at him, he was told that the company made a small mistake with the size of the container, but that he shouldn't worry. At least he could still get inside of his house. When the neighbor started protesting and started screaming, the words, you can't block me, that's illegal. The group then brought out pictures of him blocking traffic. He said, oh, that's different. But of course he would say that. So the guy called the police, and of course he would. But you know what the problem is if you contact the police almost every week to complain about non-issues, such as people parking their car fully legally in front of your house on a public street, which is something that this guy does all the time, it would seem like they would lose motivation to help you out or even believe you, because no police ended up showing up that day despite him calling several times. Seething angry, the guy stormed inside. Well, he tried to, because he managed to get his backpack stuck between the house and the container, which obviously caused much cheering and laughter from the group. But Mr. Entitled did manage to get in after he took off his backpack. The next day, the next door neighbor got a visit from two police officers who had questions about the container. The neighbor briefly explained the bogus story about how the company shipped the wrong size container and how they would resolve the matter soon enough. He also 
told the officers that the neighbor across the street had handled the actual renting, so he and the other officers went to visit that neighbor. This neighbor told the officers that he had rented that container for 48 hours and showed them all of the paperwork. However, he kept the official documents together with the photo of the neighbor. So when the police officers had looked at the receipt, he then looked at the picture and suddenly he too recognized the entitled neighbor. The officer asked the question, wait a second, isn't that your neighbor? To which they nodded yes. The officer then said, so you guys blocked a traffic blocker. And after he said that, he bursted out laughing, only to then quickly correct himself. He then says, just so we're clear, can you guys guarantee that this thing will be gone by tomorrow? He asked this with a stern voice, to which they said yes. The officer then said, okay, that will do for now, but don't make us come back. He then went back with his colleague to Mr. Entitled's house. They said the following, Mr. Entitled, we know all that we need to know in this situation. We're going back to the station to file a report about this, and we'll also contact the company, which this container belongs to, and we'll tell them to remove this as soon as possible. The officer then told the entitled neighbor, I'm sure we'll have this all cleared up by tomorrow. And then they left. Mr. Entitled did call the police a few more times that day, but was apparently told that his complaint was being processed. Mr. Entitled also didn't get any mail or packages that day, because the moment the mailman walked up to his house, he did a look over at the door, but soon decided to walk past it. The next day, the construction company sent a deep loader again to pick up the dumpster, and that honestly was the end of the story. Well, sort of. The pickup didn't entirely go smoothly, because one neighbor refused to move his car for 10 to 15 minutes. They went on to say, when I park it again, this moron's gonna probably scold me as he usually does. And he said this to the driver with Mr. Entitled still present, who was red in the face with anger, but he really couldn't do anything about it. But eventually, the container got removed. The two officers came back later that day to check, and also told both neighbors that they got an official warning not to pull something like this again. So now Mr. Entitled was now officially Mr. Hypocrite in the neighborhood, and people started to openly mock him about his actions. The guy eventually moved several months later, all because people absolutely could not stand him. Wow, what an awesome way to get revenge. Seriously, this guy absolutely had it coming. If you're gonna block traffic just to try and make some kind of like environmentalist point or something like that, then you are an awful person. You are literally protesting the wrong people. These are just average civilians. These are people trying to get to and from work. There has got to be a more productive way of protesting and making your point than inconveniencing people that honestly just want to get to work and do their jobs. I can't stand when I see people like that online doing that, where they like glue their hands to the road and stuff like that. That is honestly so obnoxious and seriously, people who do that are really not liked and absolutely obnoxious. Like that is not helping me join your cause. If anything, it just makes you the enemy. So truly to the original poster, this is an awesome form of revenge. And it's really cool to see that you gave this guy a taste of his own medicine. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. My parents are constantly criticizing my life and my house that I just bought. And after dealing with their awful behavior for most of my life, I now find myself at a crossroad, and I seriously now don't know what to do. Okay, I want to first start off by saying that I'm kind of at a crossroads. I'm a 26-year-old female, and I've known my boyfriend who's 28 years old for almost five years now. Both me and him and our parents have all been really good friends. I bought a house across from my parents' home, and they're on holiday like five to six months a year, but when they're home, my mom is always home because she's on lifelong paid sick leave. Technically, I bought the house by myself, but I always say it's our house, just so you know. So, when we bought our house in October last year, it immediately started with a whole lot of garbage because according to my parents, things didn't advance fast enough. They literally lost sleep sometimes because of the progress in my home. We had a lot to do. We stripped everything, put in new ceilings and walls and new electricity. We painted everything as well, etc. At first, I always felt bad when they commented on it and honestly felt guilty towards them for not finishing my house, which is kind of messed up if you think about it. Then I lost my job in November of last year, which was horrible timing, and this totally crashed my mental health. Since I didn't have to put a mask on for work anymore, my mental health state came running down on me, and I was an absolute wreck. Many days I went from the bed to the couch, and then right back to bed. I sought out help, and I found a great psychologist. She helped me realize that a big part of my mental state was due to me always breaking myself in two to live up to other people's expectations, mostly what my parents think. So I had to learn to set boundaries and speak up for myself because when I was younger, I let people basically step over my boundaries and never stood up for myself or my beliefs.
beliefs. And this was mostly geared towards my parents. If they told me my clothes were ugly, I wore something different. If they told me I was fat, I would stop eating. If they said I was an awful child, I would just agree. This whole process of setting boundaries with my parents, myself, and even my boyfriend was incredibly draining. It included loads of tears and panic attacks. During June and July, I was in our house every day working from dawn until dusk. My boyfriend came along in the weekends since I was on sick leave due to being an absolute wreck. We got some stuff ready by the second week of August and moved in. Since I wanted to live here when my birthday came around, which is August 20th. Since then, my parents have walked in and out of our garden as they please, which they somehow feel entitled to. They push themselves and their presence onto us whenever they like. And just today, they waited for my boyfriend to be out of the house so I was alone, just so they could give me a two-hour lecture about all the things I'm not doing good enough. They would ask me stuff like, how could you still have boxes in your house when you have 15 days to unpack everything? So I told them I have too many days where I'm busy from morning until evening, and I haven't even done a TV night since I lived here. According to them, I obviously must be doing something wrong. The other big part in every conversation is my boyfriend. He has ADHD and autism, and I can totally understand that anyone who doesn't know him might think his quirks are weird and would have to get used to them. My parents, however, have known him for five years and need to stop always talking down to him towards me and other people. Due to his ADHD, he has trouble seeing work and prioritizing. I help him by making schedules and reminding him of things. My parents keep saying stuff like, oh, he is lazy. He isn't good enough for you. He is very aggressive. You are raising a child. And the list goes on and on. I've recently opened up to a few people about my past with my father and how he really was an awful father in several ways. And somehow this all got back to him. He is now accusing me of lying. So much so that I'm even starting to doubt myself. But how can I? I have so many vivid memories and I used to hurt myself to escape from the mental pain the abuse was causing me. When my boyfriend came home tonight, I was an absolute wreck because of all the things my father said to me. My boyfriend says he can't handle them anymore and tells me that I should break with them. I don't know what to do because although my psychologist and I have been working around this theme for a few months now, I still feel that typical child parent obligation and guilt towards them. And they are still my parents after all. Also, I can't imagine my life without my mom. What should I do? Honestly, it really kind of seems like your family's walking all over you. Like you live across the street from your parents and they come in and out of your house and your yard pretty much whenever they want. Like seriously, that is not okay. That gives you no privacy and it sounds like they want to have a say in literally everything that you do. I know if I was in your shoes, I would be going crazy at this point. Your boyfriend honestly has a point. The fact that he has autism or ADHD is not in this equation. He is absolutely seeing how this is affecting you and he really wants you to find some kind of peace in your life. Like seriously, these people do not sound like good parents. They clearly were awful towards you when you were a child, especially your father. And it really seems from the outside looking in that they just want to peck away at your happiness. And that is not okay. That seriously is really messed up and you deserve so much better than that. So I know if I was in your shoes, I would personally be setting up boundaries with my parents. Like if that was me in this situation, I would just straight up say, hey, you can't come over whenever you want. And from now on, you're going to ask or call me before coming over to my house. Because personally, if I'm going to live somewhere, it's going to be my home. It's not going to be a second home for my parents to try and claim. That is highly inappropriate and that is not okay. So hopefully something changes soon because the way your family's treating you is really awful and you absolutely do not deserve this. My mother-in-law's ex-boss decided to make her funeral all about him and I've honestly never been more offended in my life. Here's what happened. So my mother-in-law passed away last Christmas Eve. Sadly, she had been battling cancer and was in remission. She took a fall and broke her pelvis. She had an internal bleed and the doctors just didn't notice it. So that's how she passed. It was so sudden and when we got the news, my husband and I were scrambling to find our way up there because we lived across the country and our only vehicle was a super old pickup that gave out on itself just before this happened. Because of this, we weren't able to be a part of the funeral planning, but thankfully made it up there the day before with the help of his best friend. The viewing and the funeral were the same day. So as we walked into the funeral home, my husband noticed her ex's boss. We will call him John. John is not his real name. And honestly, John is a massive piece of garbage. She worked with him for the county and paid bills for different social service organizations and was the go-between for CPS. This man was so useless and she hated him with a passion. He would call her his work wife, much to her chagrin, and joke that he couldn't do anything without her. 
better. And you know what? He literally couldn't. She was doing both her and his job. She even built the database that the entire county uses to track all the money spent on the various bills. After she left, the secretary that replaced her ended up getting John fired because she quickly found out that he couldn't do his job because my mother-in-law had been doing it for him. She worked for him during the 2000s when my husband was in high school, and this is going to be important later, and this is also during the time that her husband, my father-in-law, was also diagnosed with cancer. He battled it for years, but eventually he passed away from it in January of 2011. The only reason my mother-in-law put up with his garbage and the job was because she needed the health insurance for her husband's chemo since he couldn't work. And this is something that John took full advantage of because he knew that she couldn't afford to lose her job. During the times that her husband was fighting cancer, she had to take off of work to take care of him. And during those times, her boss would send her home with work because he couldn't do any of it himself. Her husband was dying from cancer and he was still sucking every last drop of work out of her that he could. He was and still is a pretty awful person. So fast forward to the funeral and she had not worked for him in like six years. So to see him there was a complete slap in the face. Now, I'm not sure how funeral processions work in other countries, but here in the United States, there is a very specific order. First, obviously, is the hearse and my mother-in-law. After that is the closest living relatives. Since my husband was an only child and his father had already passed, he was the closest living relative. Now, she had three brothers, so they followed in the car behind ours. Then her cousin, then everybody else. As we are all making our way to the cemetery, I see someone cut in front of her brothers. I turn around and lo and behold, it's her ex-boss. I was so mad. He then tried to cut in front of us. Like, who in the world does this? You are her ex-boss and she hated you. My husband and her brothers were her family and I thought it couldn't get any worse, but honestly, it definitely did. So since we couldn't make it up there until the day before the funeral, we didn't have a say in the preacher who did her eulogy and that guy was absolute garbage. He stumbled on his words, he gave a halfway effort and obviously didn't know anything about her. It was so awkward. But after he spoke, before my husband gets a chance to stand up and speak about her, her ex-boss gets up. He starts talking about her and all the work that she did working for him and how she did everything and she was his work wife. Are you kidding me right now? And then he talked at length about his work with the county and how they helped the community. And he just kept patting himself on the back. But the absolute icing on the cake was that he said that her work for him when my husband was a teenager directly inspired her to adopt my husband from Paraguay when he was just a baby. And honestly, when I heard that, I was so shocked. Like, are you so self-absorbed that you think that what you did is so important that it inspired her to adopt 15 years earlier? I was squeezing my husband's hand so hard during all of this that I was about to break it in two. We didn't say anything out of respect for his mom, but this is why I say when I pass away, please tell off everybody that I hate. Let them know exactly how I felt and even throw hands if necessary. Because at that point, I honestly won't care in the slightest. What an awful human being. Like seriously, that guy is an absolute jerk. He got up there and hogged the stand and just felt the need to try and pat himself on the back. Like buddy, you did not play an important role in her life. If anything, you are definitely the villain in that story. You made her life incredibly miserable. You did everything you could to try and stifle her life and basically make it so she had to work for you. Because she couldn't get another job, she literally needed to work there to pay for chemo for her husband. So honestly, that guy's a complete jerk. He absolutely should have been told off and he had no business standing up there and trying to pretend like he was a good boss. This next one came from the Am I the Jerk subreddit. Check the links in the description if you would like to submit your own story. Am I the Jerk for refusing to go to my sister's graduation after she rudely declined to go to my graduation one year prior? Here's what happened. So for a bit of context, this happened back in 2018. I was graduating from high school the year before my sister graduated college. My sister is the kind of person that is very random, so she can be great or she can be absolutely horrible. A few days before my high school graduation, I asked my sister, we'll call her Anna, that's not her real name, to come along and be at my graduation because even if anybody showed up, it would make me so happy. She also was super open in her schedule because she had finished her own finals for the year. When I asked Anna to come, she said, and I quote, I am too busy to waste my time on a little pest like you. Now, obviously, I was angry and sad, but the world kept spinning. The graduation went great. My parents were super proud and all that other stuff. I was still mad though because she literally kept insulting me for like five months. Anyways, fast forward to the end of the next school year and she was graduating from her college. All of a sudden, Anna was so nice. She was so sweet to me and she started begging me to come to her 
graduation. Now, as a funny side note, I had no idea what day her graduation was, and I had arranged for my best friend and I to go on a trip up north to a beach house that my family owns. So when she told me that, I think you can guess what I said to her. But you know what? I'm going to say it anyways. I said right to her, I'm too busy to waste my time on a little pest like you. And as a final icing on the cake, my parents couldn't come to her graduation because they were in the Bahamas with my aunt and uncle. It was a double fatality. And you know what? My trip was amazing. So my sister got served a massive tray of humble pie and is actually way better now and is quite respectful a lot more. So am I the jerk for refusing to go to my sister's graduation after she was so rude about not coming to my high school graduation? I don't think you're the jerk, really. I think it sounds like your sister is super entitled and she thought she could boss you around and mock you for five months after not showing up. Like, seriously, this probably would have been okay if she didn't then spend the following five months treating you like garbage. Like, I don't know about you, but I would personally probably have let it go if she had just shut up about it. But it's the fact that she kept bringing it up and she just had to have some kind of dig at you would probably be the point where I would no longer care and want to try and get her back in some kind of way. So no, I don't think you're the jerk in any kind of way. I think this is kind of one of those karma moments. And honestly, if she wanted you to come to her graduation, then she should have done the same for you. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, check out Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked in the description.